1. The Navy officers are waiting for a verdict from the court. The prisoners are not chained, due to the impossibility of escaping the military fortress. Among the 20 prisoners are 17 former priestesses from the Mountain God cult. They were accused of treason and plotting against the religious order of the Empire. The rest were three soldiers convicted of dissertation. Among the 17 priestesses is Lady Yang Emiko. She had been a respected insider of the court of the former Empress Jagutio. Emiko's daughter Taiko was also included in those arrested. Taiko remained with the cult due to the comfortable standard of living it offered. Her father was abandoned from the country due to violating the sacred rights of his community, which was impregnating a noble and unmarried noble woman who happened to be Taiko's mother. A messenger arrives with the verdict, the prisoners are banned to the kingdom Yuza. Yuza is an island state, that's under the governance of the kingdom seller, which in turn is under the military government of the Empire Wa, Japan, since the invasion led by Empress Jingo Tio. After the death of the Empress, her son Oji inherited all those regions. The prisoners are led to the harbour. Three ships were ready to sail them away. The trip will take three full days. One of the captains himself is someone who is against the current regime. He is involved with some conspirators to overthrow the emperor and to end W.A.'s reign in Sela. 2. Nineteen years earlier there was a big civil war within the kingdom Kasha, combined with a foreign attack on its western provinces, both events which ended that civilization. At the same time, there were several Arab chiefdoms around the Red Sea that were annexed by the Aksum Empire. These two events brought significant changes in the economic and political climate in Asia. The rulers in Rome were not happy with the actions of the Aksum Empire. At this time the Kofu graveyards became popular in the Empire Wa, following the annexation by Wa of several beach colonies. At this time there were several Kashates living in Sela that lost their citizenship. The leader of the envoy didn't want to report the fall of Kasha to the king of Sela and the empress of Wa. This would mean that they would lose their diplomatic immunity and legal protection as representatives. The Roman consulate in Beech did report the fall of Kasha to Beech. The Kasha envoy was warned by a Roman spy without the spy being aware that the envoy was already aware of it. The 54 Kashates asked for asylum at Wa. The leaders approved it and they moved into the capital of Wa. They were not permitted to mingle themselves among the native population. Furthermore, they had to participate into the state's religious ceremonies. Besides that, they had the same rights benefits as obligations as the natives. One of the Kashates got involved with Lady Emiko, who lived in her own extended house right outside the city. Her house was decorated with many statues, paintings and pottery from Sela. Also, she had her own pool in her living room in which she often bathed. Her rooms were filled with books, olive oil, rice wine, plum wine, beer and Chinese silk. She would seldom go into town, but often remained in her villa or she would join the sacred forests, forbidden for men, to converse and associate with some of her friends who were priestesses in religious rites. At this time, she was past childbearing age, yet she didn't age at all. Most people would assume she was around her early 2020s. The Kashate was a male slave who had to copy the written reports of the consuls. He also served wine at their parties. The guy, 17, who was nicknamed Satish, due to his fascination with the Hidasta culture, 
met Emiko at a restaurant in the capital. He offered her some beer and socialized with her. After a few days she invited Satish at her place, where she laid with him. She kept her pregnancy hidden and only when she was in the eighth month did one of the female house servants of Emiko informed Satish. Satish kept it quiet because he knew he commuted a transgression by getting involved with a local. The baby was a girl and she was healthy at birth. They called her Taiko. After the birth they remained in an affair for three more years and Satish builded a bound with his daughter but they kept it hidden. Satish was a freeman in war and he also also had his own job and income. Suddenly, one day, Satish was arrested and commanded by the authorities to leave war within seven days or to face execution together with his lover and their child. Satish didn't leave war. He just disappeared and from time to time visited his daughter. It was only after eight years that he found out the real age of Emiko. Yuri 61, he was confused how is that even possible? I was born in Sela, in a village near their capital. I was sold into slavery by my parents, due to their debts to the government. But not only that. The king of Sela didn't want any blood to be spilled. So he appeased the Empress of Wa by sending young girls and adolescent women as slaves. It was a form of tribute. She handed him a birth certificate and a copy of the agreement between Wa and Sela concerning the tribute. I served at the court of the Empress. Later I was sent back as a slave to Sela. From there I managed to return to the palace of the Empress, this time I had a lot of gold and silver with me. Which I found in an abandoned harbour in Korea. I managed to bribe her into give me a large plot of land, the promotion to a noble woman, and privileges at her palace. So, that's what happened. I have been living here since I was 19. That's about 42 years. She took off her clothes and entered into the small pool in her living room. I've been back to Korea quite often. Sela and Beekch are both beautiful countries, despite all the rivalries between them. I also visited Wei for several months. You never married? No. I had no interest in marriage. I never bothered much with it anyway. You re a priestess right? Kind of. I do participate in rituals and I have some good friends who are priestesses. But I'm not fully initiated. Which has its advantages. I'm not obliged to live completely separate from society. Also, I'm permitted to have my own house and to have house servants. I often have priestesses coming here though. I often donate money to them as financial aid. What about your family in Korea? I invited them twice over here. Shortly after I settled into this house. They all came, with permission of the Empress. Foreigners aren't often allowed over here. You know that. They became greedy. They wanted me to make political connection for them. So I did. After I did it they never spoke with me again. My parents died only 12 years after I was sold into slavery. I attended their funeral. And I went to their cave five times, and then I had my closure. My parents were the only ones I really cared about among my family and also my younger sister. She married, got five children and died when she had her sixth. None of her kids ever showed any interest in me. But I don't mind at all. I've learned to accept that I don't need the confirmation of others. When you depend yourself on others' confirmation, you'll get hurt and taken advantage of. 
That's one of the reasons I didn't desire marriage. As a foreigner I would be expected to assimilate to my husband's culture and I would instantly lose all the privileges I have. She drank some juice in her bronze cup. Taiko will inherit all I have after I'm gone. People in this country tend to become quite old. There are men and women above 100. Some even became 115. So, I will be around for a while. That's why I'm taking it easy. That's why I'm not traveling that much anymore. But you, Satish, you'll need to watch out. If anyone discovers you around here, you're dead. Be alert. They might arrest me too. And Taiko. Two months later Satish never came back again. Never again did she nor Taiko noticed any trace of his existence. The Kashates were also gone from Wa. According to a baker in town Satish confessed that he had two other children with a woman in Wei, whom he married in secret. It appeared that Satish was only in Wa to take away wealth from Emiko's house and ship it to his family. After some years he decided to leave permanently in order to see his children grow up. Taiko was traumatized by what happened, but eventually she healed from it. 3. After three days and five hours they arrived at the shores of Yuza. The officers led them to a large hut on the beach. There they were told to never leave the island or to face capital punishment when arrived back in Wa or Sela. They would receive weekly resources from Sela for which they will have to employ themselves on the island. The officers then left them behind. User only had 2,000 inhabitants, which were led by a local king. There was another island, just a few hours away, which was also under the jurisdiction of user there there were around 500 people. When the boats sailed away, Emiko realized that she would probably spend the rest of her life on this island. She accepted it. She never imagined her life going like this when she was young, being in a high age, with a daughter, abandoned by her previous lover, and betrayed by her own friends. It was lunchtime when they saw the ships disappearing on the horizon. The former priestesses walks on the beach to discover the island. The island is quite tropical, beautiful and for the most part, empty. They walked into the woods, which went up into the hillside. They encountered a local fisherwoman. She informed them that there was only one town on the island, and that's where almost everyone lived. Only a few people had huts outside that town. At the late afternoon, Emiko got hungry. She and several of those present began to pluck fruits from the bushes. One of them found a silver coin under the dirt. When the others, who were gathering fruits, came they discovered that it's an old hand coin from the earlier dynasties. The coin was quite big and heavy. They gave the coin to Emiko as a gift, because she was the eldest. She gladly received it. After receiving the coin, she hid it into her purse. In her purse there were also other silver coins. These coins were quite small and they originated in India. These coins were not melted into Wa coins, so she kept them as a collection. Emiko left the group and walked on a small road close to them. When she followed the road, she encountered a small shrine. There was nobody present. She walked further and she noticed a side road. When she entered the side road, it was as if she entered a beautiful garden with a beautiful lake. The area was closed off by nature. She saw a small house on a small distance. She checked it out. 
When she was walking, one of the other girls grabbed her. Where are you going? Be quiet. I think I found a house here. She grabbed her now and pulled her with her. Let's check it out. They arrived at the door. She knocked. Anyone there? She knocks several times. I think we should go, Lady EMI. She opened the door. Let's go in, Aiko. Inside there's nothing special. Some furniture, a clock, a bed, some instruments, two paintings on the wall of two kings, and some scrolls on a small footstool. The house had a layer of dust in it which indicated that it had been abandoned for a long time. Emiko shook the dust of one of the carpets and sat down on it. There were many pillows behind her to support her back. Aiko sat on the bed, which was also dusty. This is quite comfortable, Lady Emiko. Yu Yug. What? Yu Yug. Call me Yu Yug. That's my real name. I'm from Sela. We are not in war anymore. Remember. True. And it's not as if we are about to go back any time soon. So. Let's drop the formal etiquette. Don't you miss it back home. This is my home now also yours. This place must have belonged to someone important. Or rich. Probably both. She pointed at the paintings on the wall you see those two paintings over there. Only government officials and elites have paintings of heads of states in their houses. I can read Chinese. The left is of a former Chinese emperor and the right is of a seller king. So probably this house used to be the residence of a diplomat or of an ambassador to this island. Probably. I never learn it how to read. You won't need it here either. So. You're going to possess this house. I already am. For. Two weeks after the banishment of the twenty, violent chaos erupted in the capital of Wa. This led to the death of several rioters. This violence was so contagious that it spread throughout the country. Within two months there were riots everywhere in the urban regions. The elders of the country realized that nobody had any desire to receive the present emperor as ruler. Even the government officials refused to obey his orders. A scheme was planned, by the secret cults, to choose a young shaman girl, one of the close relatives of the former shaman empress, to be placed on the throne. This happened in secret, amongst the elders and governors of the country. The emperor was not executed nor expelled, but he was no longer the head of state. Instead, the elders throughout the land endorsed the new empress Ayotio, she was only 13 years of age. The news, however, was not to be shared with the inhabitants of Yuza. The elders didn't want the banished conspirators to request royal pardon and return back to Wa. With the new empress they longed for a new era in the country. That new era excluded influences from the previous shaman empress. Within one week after the coronation the riots stopped and society turned back to normal. Instead, every week food supplies were sent to user. As usual. One month after the ascension of Iyo to the throne she sent an envoy to China and four to Korea, to the kingdoms Tama, Sela, Beech and Goryeo. Each envoy also departed with gifts and slaves as tribute. That same week, there was another ship with supplies that arrived as user. Around 10.10 in the morning, Aiko knocked on Emiko's door. 
Edgar House Emiko found at the side road happened to be the old resident of a Korean governor who fled to the island to escape legal prosecution. He lived there and died at age 57. He was shipped home to be buried. Since then the house has been empty, for almost 20 years. Most islanders of Yuza even forgot that the property existed. The king of Yuza approved Emiko's confiscation of the property. Eiko carried a wagon with her, with a lot of goods in it. When Emiko opened the door she walked through with the wagon. Is this all that was sent? No, you yug. But the others had already taken their share. Each a small sack. These sacks were the leftovers. So, I didn't want them to return with them. So I brought them here. Let's see what's inside of them. She goes through some of the sacks. It's vegetables, fruits, small bottles of wine. Aiko would you like to stay here tonight? Well. I wanted to stay with my boyfriend. You have a boyfriend? Yeah. He's so cute. He lives here nearby. I didn't want to stay all by myself. It's a bit lonely here. I can bring him with me. Ah. I will. And guess what? I can bring another guy for you too. Aiko. I will. You yug. Everyone thinks you're 22. So don't worry. If you don't say anything. Nobody will know. Ah. Good. Just no old dudes. I only had one male companion in my life. And it was only after I lived a half century on earth. And he didn't even knew. I still feel young so someone young as I feel is preferred. Most of the men here are younger than 30. A lot of the young men leave towards mainland Korea to have a better life. Most never return. They marry overseas, build their families and careers over there and die. I can't blame them. I mean. This is a beautiful island. But that's all it is. An island. It's the same all the time. On the mainland it's also the same all the time. Most people once they emigrate to another country, they remain in the same city they arrived in. Humans are often creatures of habit. We tend to stay in certain places and we like to repeat the same conversations why? Because we're used to. And often we don't know better. Or we don't want to know better. Exactly. Well. I'll leave now. I think I'll be here after sunset. I too see you tonight. Bye. 5. That evening, during sunset, Yu Yig was bathing in the pond at her house. The pond is also connected with a small stream, which causes the water to stream and be refreshed. The water is not cold, but lukewarm. The water was crystal clear so she didn't need any soap. After she bathed, she went inside and she oiled her body with perfumed coconut oil. She remained seated on a small footstool. While she was in her room, she heard Aiko and two guys enter in. This is a nice place. Where is the owner? She's gone for now. She will return later tonight Aiko explained there's a big garden outside. Let's go. Matthew. You can wait here if you want. I know you're a bit tired. All right. Matthew sits down on a carpet you guys are going to have fun in the pool. Probably, the other dude agrees smiling. Maybe maybe Aiko smiles too just be kind when the owner returns. I will. 
the couple leaves. Yu Yiyak sees through one of the holes in the wooden wall. It's a young man, tanned, a bit overweight, sitting on a carpet. Matthew, she thinks that's a romanized version of a Hebrew name. She puts a long bluish blank over herself and binds it with a belt below her ribs. She puts her sandals on and quietly leaves through the side door, where also her room is. Outside she walks around the house to pretend as if she's only arriving. After five minutes she walks through the front door. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. And you are a friend of Aiko. He stands up and gives a little bow to her, out of respect. Mattia who? Nice to meet you. I met Aiko a few weeks ago. Polite girl. Your name is Matthew. That's not a Korean name. Nor a name from this region. True. My mother used to know an woman that read the translation of a Jewish book called Matthew. My mom got fascinated by the book. That she named me after it. Ah. Interesting. What's your name? You're from Watu. Yeah. I'm Yu Yig. Call me Yu. All right, Yu. Several weeks ago, we were banned to this island by the Emperor of Wa. We were suspects of an assassination attempt on his life. We didn't have anything to do with it. But. You know. Politics. They wanted to blame someone. So they executed many and they banned some people. Emperor of Wa. Yes. Emperor. I think you're mistaken. What are you talking about Matthew? The Emperor of Wa is not head of state anymore. She freezes. What? We don't know exactly what happened. But one of the sailors from the village returned back from Wa some days ago. They had dethroned their ruler and a young girl named Yotio is now the queen of Wa. She's a shaman too. They reported us. HMM. That must have happened after we were expelled. I guess so. Anyway. The girl is quite popular throughout her country now. And she also sent many envoys to other countries in Asia. HMM. Maybe you people have a chance now to get your old life back. It's my old life. Old. I have no interest of going back. This is my new home. You don't come to town that often. I do but I prefer the quietness of this environment. I'm used to it. Back in where I lived outside of town in a large house. I didn't mind going to town. But it was always blessed to return back to the stillness. You know a girl named Taiko. She's from Watu. I'm her. She's beautiful and very social. She is very liked by the people in town. I am one of her friends. She has always been like that. You use parfum you smell good. Thanks she's blushing. She rushes to her room and comes out with a small purse. These are some coins from Wa and she shows them this is one with the image of Queen Himiko. And this is one of the Prime Minister. It's silver. Yes it is. There's much silver over there. Also due to tribute from the rich. Can I have one? Sure. At that moment Aiko and her boyfriend enter in. Ha. Huh. Guess who's having a good time? Aiko teases them. Sure we are. Yu Yig puts her arm around him and leans on his shoulder you guys are hungry. Yeah. 
Yu Yuyag picks up a small kitchen which was captured in a cage. Let's begin. 6. It's one o'clock in the night. Everyone is sleeping. Yu Yuyag wakes up. She stands up with the blanket and pushes Matthew's arm aside. She leaves quietly and wanders to the pond. At the pond she swims for a few minutes in the cold water and returns to the side. She then sits on her knees and lets all his semen flow out. Afterwards she swims again to wash herself. When done she puts the blanket around her to dry herself. She then puts her sandals on and walks towards the beach. Even though it's night, the temperature is not that low. After a few minutes she's on the beach gazing at the stars. At the beach she sees her daughter. Taiko. Mum. What are you doing up this late? The same I can ask of you. I had no sleep. So I wanted to come here and gaze at the stars. Me too. Mum. You look quit excited. Me. I know you. Ha 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 she laughs yeah you're right. You know Matthew. Yeah. He is the grandson of an evangelist who is also living in the town. Well. Let's say I had some warmth again this night. Since your father was gone. Ha ha. I knew it, she points to the sky that's Orion. The hunter. Yeah. Both women walk towards Yu Yuyag's house. I didn't knew you lived in such a beautiful house. I was allowed to keep it. Good. I'm happy for you. They are sleeping now. So we need to be still. They enter the house. Taiko lays on one of the mattresses Yu Yuyag lays on the ground. Yu Yuyag lays on another one. Within two minutes, Taiko is already asleep. When she saw that Taiko fell asleep she stood up and walked outside again. She walked back in the direction of the beach. On a distance, before leaving the road, she saw two ships coming towards the beach. The ships had lamps that made them visible. What is this? She hid herself in the bushes. When she ships arrive she sees how several navy officers with weapons come to shore, with smaller canoes. She hears them speaking. We are commanded to bring just a few of them. We also must look for Emiko. We are not certain that we will find her. We will have to look hard then. We will wait till the morning. I don't want any disturbance right now. Fine. So we have to find Emiko and at least three of those band former priestesses. That's right. Come. She sees how the group of men walk towards the east of the shore. She runs back to her house. When she arrived she put all the lights out. Matthew sees her. What's going on you? SSSST she puts her hand on his mouth keep quiet. There are some navy officers from Wahia. They are here looking for me. When she finished whispering they heard some people walking outside. Both ran to the window and they saw the officers with fackles walking. Let's go let's go. She runs to the side door as quick as possible. Matthew follows here. And they hide in the forest, while looking at the house. Why are they looking for you? I don't know she turns to him I was banned here. I used to be involved with the female priesthood of the former empress. I don't know. Maybe they want me back. That's good. Right. No it isn't. They see how the men eventually leave. 
They return quietly through the front door. Who's she? That's my daughter. 7. The next morning the soldiers communicated with the leaders of Yuza. They gave up five of the Bandwa people. They claimed that Emiko, Yuyug, went he missing, others claimed she died, for indeed many didn't see her since she arrived at Yuza, only Eiko, her daughter and those two native Yuza men. Yuyug, eight days later, heard that the five priestesses were reinstalled in the cult of the sun god worship under Empress Ayotio. The news was brought by a blacksmith who imported pearls from the Yuza kingdom. That same day Yu Yig sailed together with several Yuza priests, towards a group of Fisher Islands, which are around six hours away from Yuza. The group of islands are inhabited by fishermen and their families who join them into fishing. Yu Yig left her daughter Taiko and her fried Aiko to look after her house. When they arrived at the house, Yu Yig was received in a large house, where the governor lived. Many fish dishes were prepared by the wives of the fishermen to welcome the priests and the few civilians, Yu Yig included, that joined them. The civilians, seven of them, were from the Ukdu Island, which is right at the east shore of Yuza. The priests come mournly to the rock islands which were less than one kilometer in diameter, where around 400 people lived inside the caves and on the small towns. These people are also often visited by fishermen from Wa who import fish and fish saws from them. Inside one of the rock islands, there was a long stairs going downwards. Yu Yig followed three of the wives and they came into a large underground apartment. The apartment also had tunnels that extended to several other small rooms which were below the sea floor. They could hear the waves above them. So you live below the sea. These chambers were excavated by fishermen from Yuza around 200 years ago. Some 80 years back some sailors found them when their ship wrecked around here. Since then these chambers and tunnels became our hidden city over here. Interesting. That's not all. What's more to it? Come. Yu Yig follows one of the wives. She is carrying a lamp with her to illuminate the tunnel. After some walk they arrive at a door. She opens it with a key and hangs the lamp inside. What is this? When the fisherman's wife lights other lamps, she notices it. You. This is a room filled with silver objects that the sailors 80 years back left behind. They never came back to pick it up. The silver is still in good condition. Wait a minute so you folks here are quite wealthy. You can say that. We keep this hidden so that neither the king of Yuza, nor the king of Sela, nor the rulers of Wa, nor the kings of Beekj will send their robbers to take away the treasure. Most people have forgotten about the Korean Chinese envoy that crashed over here. Many think that the story of the treasure is nothing more than a fairy tale. When my grandmother was hungry once, she was a small girl of 11 years old. She and her elder sister, of 27 years, entered a cave at a hill. It's there that they discovered all of this. So, why don't you all move and build a new life somewhere else? We are happy with the free life here. No taxes. No slavery. Just fish, sun, rain, wind and relaxing. Often we do go on land to Wa. Or to Korea. She hands over a silver cup with coins in it. Here. This is for you. Yu Yig receives it. Four months later after the trip. When she's back into her house she has an abundance of fish with much silver coins, 
silver kitchenware and bronze jewellery. Her daughter took the silver cup which she used to drink rice wine from. What will we do with all that silver? she asked Taiko while she was writing a poem Will we remain here? We two stay here and once my child is born. We'll purchase some land for him or her at the shores of Korea. Me and my husband will move there I think if we have more children. That's fine. We will often return to the silver shores of Yuza. To visit you. As long as I'm still around. You too be. She drinks some blueberry juice. You two probably become 120. Ha 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 she smiles and still look like 30. Indeed. How is Matthew? We're fine. By the way, you your tummy is kind of big. And you've been quite dizzy lately. So. Maybe you're pregnant. Me, she laughs out loud no way. Maybe you are. Now you mention it. It has been since two weeks that I've been dizzy. Visit the local medicine man in town. He can tell you. Seven months later Yu Yeag gives birth to a son named Gong. Thirty years later the young man had become an admiral in the Bikje Navy. When Gong was stationed near Yrizyag, Seoul, he met a German evangelist named Ralph. He had two daughters, Larissa and Jessica. Gong married Larissa, after approval of Ralph and the Christian elders, and they lived in their home at Hehan River. Yu Yeag visited Wa thrice and spent time with Empress Yeo, to tell her stories about life at the court of Empress Jigu. She remained several years each visit. At age 114 Yu Yeag's husband passed away due to an infection he received during a hunting party in Korea. He was 51 years old. He was buried on Yu Yeag's property in Yuza. When she was 116 she began writing records of her life and also history of the governments during her lifetime. She still appeared young as in her late 2020s. She had a young slave girl from the mainland, named Sine, that was her house servant that accompanied her after her husband's sudden death. It was rumored that the slave girl was a daughter whom her husband begot with a mistress 15 years earlier. It was also remarkable that Sine didn't appear before her husband died, yet she was the first one present even before his wife, to arrange the funeral. Also, she looked exactly just like Matthew. Sine was quite close towards other, except to Yu Yeag and to Yu Yeag's daughter Taiko, 55. Taiko's husband ran away with their child and he never returned. Later she heard that he was married to another woman and had five kids with her. Taiko never married again. Her daughter, Samiko, later returned with her husband not out of love and longing for her mother, but to ask for a possible inheritance. This she did to appease her abusive husband and her money-greedy family-in-law. Taiko forgave her, paid her 1200 bronze coins and the silver cup she received from her mother, and sent her away. Yu Yeag two months later demanded the cup back she sent a group of soldiers from WA who threatened his grandson-in-law with imprisonment. So the cup was returned. Samiko never contacted them again. Sine pours red wine into the silver cup. It's expensive wine imported from the north of Korea. She hands the cup to Yu Yeag who at the moment was laying on the fauto. She was undressed with a bottle of olive oil near her. She had smeared her whole skin with olive oil. Her skin glowed because of it. But also because the olive oil made her sweat more in the warm temperature of the room. Thank you. 
She drinks half of the cup empty drink the rest of it. Sign drinks the cup empty. Yu Yiag stands up and walks towards a small bath house that she let some Greeks build 20 years ago. The tub was lukewarm and bubbling. Her house slave followed her. Take off your top and join me. And bring the silver scale with grapes, honey and bread with you. While Yu Yiag enters the bubble bathtub, Sign takes off her skirt and top, oils her naked skin with coconut oil, puts her hair in a knot, arranges the silver plate and walks towards the tub. After she joined her mistress in the bath she hands her some honey. Sign Yig, after I pass away I want you to travel to the Han River, to Yiraiziog, to bring my son Gong and his family my will. All I leave unto him. Also, make sure one of those Christian churches will be ready to do my funeral. And tell Larissa that I will soon meet her when our Saviour returns. She ate the honey and pushed a piece of bread, dipped in some wine and honey, into Sine's mouth. 